Welcome to eTeachers 365, where education and culture meet. My name is Elaine Johnson, wife, mother, educator. Today I'm going to read a story with you called Mary Had a Little Glam. This story was written by Tammy Sawyer and illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. Mary had a little glam that grew into a lot. And everywhere that Mary went, she wasn't hard to spot. Is that your curtain? Meow. But on the day she started school, she caught some by surprise. Sweet Mary shrugged and hugged her mom. I must accessorize. Then Mary click clack down the block in frilly formal wear. And by the time she got to school, she added extra flair. When Mary took a look around, her heart was filled with woe. The other kids in class with her were glamless head to toe. So Mary offered fashion tips, more pink, more beads, more shine. A hat for him and trim for her. Go boa, it's divine. Soon Mary brought out glitz and glam in everyone she met. The students, teacher, principal, and Clark, the classroom pet. Now story time had gowns and crowns and mounds of striped chiffon. The art class came with glitter glue and trips to her salon. The Mary amped up music class with pomp and circumstance. At checkout time, she was sublime, left not a thing to chance. The morning flew and soon it was the best part of the day. It's recess time, the teacher said and Mary led the way. But all came to a sudden stop. Each kid surveyed the scene. We're clearly dressed all wrong for this. Boo-hoo, the 17. Poor Mary twirled her parasol. The crisis was a 10. She never figured out a plan. All was lost, but then She tossed her shades and her silk-lined cape, her scarf and strappy shoes. And Mary's friends were just as fast. There was no time to lose. The class raced for the jungle gym, the spiral slide and swings. Then Mary grinned and grabbed a ball, among some other things. Now Mary's flair for what to wear is better than before. True glamour often calls for lots, but sometimes less is more. So, why did I choose Mary Had a Little Glam? I think the story is beautiful, the illustration is wonderful, and the fact that I have an African-American daughter who loves to accessorize, just put it over the top. As a parent, you can pick out sight words in here for the younger students, and also for the older students, there's wonderful vocabulary words in here as well. So. Pick this story for the main character being African-American, uh, but also in a positive, she's seen in a positive light, which I think is really important. We're very intentional about the types of stories we bring into our home. As an educator, I think it's important to share this type of story. One, it teaches alliteration, also with the vocabulary, but also problem solving. For example, towards the middle end of the story, when they had to go out for recess, they weren't sure what to do. She was a little frustrated, but she didn't slam doors and she didn't get upset. She figured out a solution and she moved on. I think it's important to show stories where an African-American main character is also a problem solver in a graceful way. Have you ever been disappointed? You can ask your students questions like that. Also, as an educator and a parent, I think it's important not only to have these type of books in my classroom and in my home, I think that all people should choose books that have a variety of characters seen in the stories because with what's going on in the world, we want to make sure that our children see a reflection of diversity 
not just when they go to someone's house and not just in their teacher's classroom, but also in your own homes. So I hope you have, I hope you enjoy these little tidbits from eTeachers365 for education and culture need. Thank you.